Warcraft 3 action, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right. Back to the RTS game. And today we have an undead versus human. And all the way on the right side of Echo Isles, we have good old Todonte. Johan Merlo taught himself with his romantic human account, the number one in the Battle.net ranking these days, going up against the crazy frog from Sweden. Mad Frog at it again. Guy has been playing his heart out recently. Both of these are, by the way, streaming as well on Twitch. I'm gonna try and remember to include their Twitch links in the video description on YouTube if you're watching it there. But you can definitely check them out on Twitch. Both of them are streaming their games quite often. And especially Madfog has been actually doing a lot of streaming in Warcraft 3 and got a lot better as well. Maybe not quite at the top of the European ladder just yet, but definitely one of the more serious player in that environment. And this is an opening that you're actually going to see from him quite a bit. Necropolis coming in before he adds a second ziggurat, just so they can get it around the fact that you want to add a bit more supply while not investing into too much wood here. And in this case, uh, well, Necropolis obviously only costs gold, so it costs a little bit more than just dropping the ziggurat there but it gives you the supply without you having to uh, just like go into two more with the, the or lumber at the beginning so that's actually quite important for the setup that he has it goes into a lot of fast expansion builds with this and he really loves to go into his dreadlord first not quite on the same level that Sude, the french player does but still a lot of dreadlord first from mad frog just in general and todd actually opening up here with a mountain king first as well so obviously that lacks a little bit of power in the early game which you get with the arc mage thanks to the water elemental where you can just set up a strong push it helps you creeping too but if you get high level heroes with the mountain king and some of that stuff then it can be quite powerful as well that nuke combo with the potential paladin coming in second or maybe even a blood mage on occasion is really something but in this case, we're actually having uh, Todd with the MK already out and obviously going straight into a bit of militia enhanced creeping to make sure that he gets the experience lead over his opponent here. I haven't really seen any of this, so this is actually one of the games that I haven't caught. Again, some of the players occasionally send me some of their matches to cast when they think that they are quite exciting and they were good games. And that's something we're going to focus on here. But in a lot of the games that I've actually watched from Mad Frog recently, he goes into an early expansion with this build. And it seems to be exactly the thought process behind this one too. So already moving straight down to bottom. And you can already recognize right now that he has quite a bit of lumber saved up here that he can now use for that as well. So he's sitting at 288 and moves straight down to the bottom of the map in order to go for that expansion. And in the inventory here, already the Sacrificial Skull to get some blight into the action so that he can drop one of the ziggurats early on for the first spirit tower. That's exactly what we're getting. And he goes straight into it. Haunted gold mine for him. At the same time now, over to the right side, we have the level 2 for the Mountain King of Tot, who has in the inventory a ring of protection plus 3. And, well, on a couple of scout farms also on the map here. Trying to play around those, but over to the left, that expansion is now slowly starting to set up. And Todd hasn't scouted anything yet. Todd himself is instead just trying to go for an expansion at the bottom right of Echo Isles, but hasn't really sent anything over to his opponent. And as we already talked about a bit earlier, if you don't have that Archmage and those water elementals, the early game is oftentimes a little bit easier for the undead player. With the exception, of course, that you are running a risk of getting storm bolted and surrounded by your opponent if he plays that nicely. And that can definitely happen. So very similar to a sleep surround from a dreadlord, just a little bit less effective in terms of the duration that you're stunned out if you're hit by the storm bolt, but obviously the damage component is a bit different. Expansion at this point also for him. And well, as we're looking at that, we're having the Dreadlord with quite nice items here. First of all, you have level 3. That's already pretty f uh, pretty amazing. Especially since one of the things that Madfrog does a lot is he really plays a ton around the Carrion Swarm. He loves to go into early Carrion Swarm after initially starting with Sleep. Sometimes reskills later on, but Aura is one of those things that he doesn't focus as much on as other players do with that hero. And Carrion Swarm, especially with the Pendant of Energy, if you have the mana, you can do a lot with that. We don't have a Town Portal for him. He sold that earlier in order to get a bit more gold, but we have now a couple of mercenaries. And he's already starting to set up a bit of an attack as we're having Todd creeping towards the right side of the map. Gets level three for himself. Ring of Regeneration, pretty solid for him too. Obviously, the base is already set up here. 
But we're having Mad Frog starting to accumulate a couple of forces down here at the bottom, just as we're having the expansion here getting attacked and scouted out. There's the first carry and swarm, and a lot of damage. Perfect for a worker line. Gets a lot done here. Takes the turret down too, and has another chance of dropping carry and swarm number two and maybe taking this entire thing out. Drops it all the way up to the top to even drop a footman at this point. Loses one of the mercenaries, but still, a few of the skeletons can do a bit more work here. If he actually uh, uses those ghouls a little bit more into the worker line, he could do more there too. Nice move by Todd, by the way, moving those past immediately towards the back so that this next carry and swamp didn't hit them properly. But the ghoul is still active and gets a kill, gets a second. Peasants are dying all over the place here. That's maybe... Oh, gets another one even. Especially, of course, with the forest roll coming in. And another carry and swarm. Yep, that pendant is doing wonders now. Todd can't be too happy about that. Is obviously rebuilding those workers pretty quickly. In the main base, we're seeing Mad Fog now with the Necropolis tech into uh, Tier 2. Graveyard coming through as well. Obviously, having that extra Necropolis here also helps him a lot if he is attacked in the early game to produce workers, even if attacked during attack. So he can replenish the, those Acolytes very quickly if need be. After the recent patch, it's a little bit more enticing now for human players to make a move into Tier 3 and try and go for a castle tech, and that might be something that we're going to see from Todd there eventually. At the meantime, we're having uh, still with the Dreadlord, now also Ring of Protection plus 3 in the inventory. And Todd, thanks to also the uh, Ring of Regeneration, has the Mountain King in pretty good shape. But when it comes to the supply numbers, they are pretty much evenly matched here. 38 against 33, not too much of a gap between the two of them. And now with the access towards the shop in the middle of the map, we're having Todd now in a position where he can buy himself some boots of speed as well. Since Echo Isles only features a single shop, it's obviously uh, fought over quite a lot because you want to have access to those scrolls amongst other things. Bit of an attack in the main base now with a couple of ghouls. The rest of the ghouls now at the expansion. Immediately the town portal coming through and that should at least drop a few of the ghouls here. In the main base at the same time, the militia has already been summoned in order to ensure that he is at least getting something out of the situation. But that's a lot of mining that's currently lost on the side of Todd. Only one ghoul down. And we're still having uh, the Dreadlord with a Staff of Teleportation in the inventory too. And obviously, thanks to the Carrion Swarm on level 2, he can do some serious damage here. And he is just keeping Todd busy at this point. And also with uh, the... Uh, yeah, there's the first Carrion Swarm. The Arcane Tower not focusing onto the Dreadlord because the Ghoul was soaking up the damage. Which means that the mana wasn't drained. And he has another chance to just drop another Carrion Swarm here. And that seems to be the game plan. Boots of Speed. Yep, <laughs> Oh, four down! Gets four with that. That's a hundred experience as well. And he simply portals out of harm's way. Yeah, that's annoying for Todd to play against. <laughs> yeah, and he immediately is like not... He's pretty much voicing his, his displeasure. Let's put it like that. But I can't totally understand where it's coming from. I mean, right now we have ghouls running into the expansion, into the main base, the Dreadlord with boots and a staff of teleportation, so high mobility is just making plays at both gold mines, trying to drop carrion swarm after carrion swarm. One of the things that the Dreadlord now does is replenish his mana with mana potions, and the same game is being played again. Now the Mountain King is on level 4 already, and has finally also dropped the remaining uh, creep at the, uh, at the shop in the inventory. We're now seeing the potion of lesser invulnerability. But guess who's back to business? Two, three peasants down once again that we're having another carrion wall rattle through. And with this, we're now also looking at a level four Dreadlord. Keep has been completed. At the same time, when you're looking into the expansion or into the main base, there's also the tech completed on the side of Mad Frog. Yep. Oh, <laughs> there's another big hit. Can you imagine that bad boy getting the carrion swarm onto level three? How much he can do with that? Problematic, of course, is now the fact, yes, needs to sleep because that storm bolt could hurt him a lot. It's going to be very tricky for him to also teleport out with the Staff of Teleportation, considering that he's going up against that storm bolt. There's no bash on the Mountain King, but still, that would be an issue. Still looking over to the expansion, we're having a couple more towers coming up now. There's also an arcane vault that he already got. In the main base, we're having the Blood Mage added now, so he's going to uh, try and drain the Dreadlord of Mana and hand it over to the Mountain King. And right now, the Dreadlord again with sleep. Obviously, Todd can attack his own hero and wake him up, but it allows the Dreadlord still to make his way out of there. 
And in the meantime, we're having in the main base the tech into tier 3. There's a lot of crypts, as you can tell. Madfog loves his gargoyle style, and that's exactly what he's already focusing on. And he's starting to go straight in with the air army. His expansion is obviously helping him to just massively drop now quite some of the resources here. Plus one attack upgrade already on the gargoyles. Which is definitely a big deal for him now too. And taught us to react to this. At this point we're having him with the improved lumber harvesting. Queued up is already the masonry. We're having the blood mage in a position where he can definitely help whenever he gets a hold of the dreadlord. But that in and of itself is going to be tricky. And just imagine that dreadlord getting level 5. Once that's the case it's going to be a huge problem. And there's at least one Stormball. Can you get a kill there? Yeah, stuff of teleportation on Todd's side. Which is a really good adjustment from Todd to begin with, just because he's now in a position where he can match a little bit the mobility of the Dreadlord thanks to those items. Yeah, one Carrion Swarm already through. Could actually drop another one. Needs to be careful of the Stormbolt again. Yeah, there's the Carrion Swarm again, and the Gargoyles get another Footman kill. And might even get another one if they go deep. And they do! Get the kill, but a nice move from Todd with the Stormbolt dropping quickly one of the Gargoyles. It's a bit of a crazy one. 47 supply against 45, and both of them roughly sitting at a thousand gold at this point, or at least closing in on those numbers. Upgrades are, of course, coming through for Matt Frog as we speak. He's sitting at a 1 1 upgrade now, so he got the armor upgrade too. But he moves in again, and once more the damage against the peasant line. And he's gonna focus them down one after another now if he gets a shot for it. Gargoyles, absolutely annoying, an incredibly annoying style that back in the days was especially used against Night Elf. Ixlord in particular just championing the style on uh, maps like Twisted Meadows and these days we're still seeing it being played and Matt Frog absolutely loves that ghoul gargoyle style and is focusing heavily on the air units in this. Very very annoying to deal with and you can see why. The towers definitely help but there's quite a few of those units that have been eliminated now and that means that we're looking at the Dreadlord on level 5. Which is pretty incredible in and of itself. At this point also with the additional Orb of Corruption. And one of the things against Human as well against Undead that obviously might play a role here later on too is that with this particular style you will end up with a level 6 Dreadlord and that means Infernal. And an Infernal is just amazing against another Undead or against the Human's army. So that's a big problem. And the entire game plan obviously from Mad Frog is to keep his opponent busy. Control the shop a little bit more, which is exactly what's happening here. Gets even a Scroll of Town portal. So we have him right now with a portion of invisibility being used. He's trying to make sure that he is able to get to the expansion for another big carrion swarm. Or should make an appearance here any moment. At the same time, we're currently having him down here, just uh, healing those gargoyles up. Here comes the Dreadlord. Big hit! Two of them instantly down. Bit of an attack up to the top with one of the ghouls. Todd has to deal with this somehow and it's not going to be easy. I think at th some point he has to make a play and just try and get an attack set up. Force his opponent to fight because so far it's just not working out. Another big hit and he just goes in for the kills. One, two, gets a third and he's just rampaging through those peasants. Kill after kill is coming through. There's a staff of teleportation and an immediate storm bolt. Has to use the town portal 100% but even another Carrion Swarm is getting casted by the Dreadlord and he is killing it. And the Gargoyles are not far behind. They're already moving in again. Todd at this point on 52 supply but he's pretty much out of gold. And you compare that to Matt Frog, he's currently sitting at an easy 59. Still a couple of resources left. Two attack upgrades by him for him right now on those gargoyles and they are becoming stronger and stronger and stronger just ripping one of the turrets apart that just has been built here in the main base Todd is just towering up wherever he can trying to get the vision as well and this is just a bit of a disaster now for the human player he's losing more of the worker line here that's obviously reducing his income heavily too but some gargoyles still get lost so while we're seeing upgrades coming in for the undead player this is still a bit of a problem for him there's obviously true side now also in the mix. But you look towards the top and we are looking at a Dreadlord that is by now nearly on level 6. So we are talking Inferno soon. And at the same time with 1-1 one, one upgrades, the school army is starting to prepare the second hit against the human player. In the main base, we're having even more ghouls being built. So a quick switch 
from Mad Frog. Has the Gargoyle still ready for the harass? But here comes the attack. The immediate town portal in the main base. But once again, the Carrion Swarm. A couple of additional hits coming in. As we're having once again an attempt at a storm but it's not quite working out. Level 6 already on the Dreadlord. Has the Infernal now ready, but doesn't commit to the fight just yet. But Mad Frog is just annihilating the entire main base economy of his opponent again. And already moving cross map as we speak. Loses a lot of units in the process, on the other hand. Level 2 now on the Blood Mage, and there's a level 5 for the Mountain King. And that bad boy is obviously a beast as well on the higher levels, but there it is! Infernal time, baby! Getting dropped here right away. Another quick portal from the Mountain King who moves down there with a Staff of Teleportation, but this spells trouble. Immolation alone, and <laughs> another big hit by the Dreadlord, who is nearly on level 7 at this point. Absolutely rocking it again. Finding the pendant of energy was just fantastic for him. And this is a great setup. 40 supply, 4 tot, 56 right now for Mad Frog. Still mining without a problem down here at the bottom of the map. Still also looking at a fair amount of ghouls here on 1 1 upgrades. And Todd is just playing defense. And this is going to be a problem in the long run. He can't play defense forever against this. Oh, ho, 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 Stormbolt! Just a second too late. But look at that army all the way to the top. He's attacking at multiple fronts continuously, and that is just a massive problem for Todd. He can't force the fight that he really needs to fight here. And this is a massive issue. He's just running around trying to counter what Mad Frog is throwing against him. And it's incredibly difficult. I mean, no matter where he goes, he is running into trouble. At this point, you really see Todd wishing this was Heroes of the Storm. And he had another quick dwarf launch and could just hop around with Muradin and jump in and get another clap in. But that's not the case. So now we're having the ghouls heavily damaged but not taken out. And one Skull of Healing is going to deal with this quickly. Second hero comes in. No reason not to. So Death Knight is getting played at this point. And yeah, he learned the hard way that clap is an issue. Level 3 clap, by the way. And that thunder clap is going to wreck any ground army if the Mountain King gets even close to it. Another sleep comes through. So far, well done here. And the duo is obviously going to attempt to get a little bit more out of this. But the solo creeping on the Death Knight was actually nice. And he even got a Skull of the Beast here. So now we're having even Cannibalize being used to make sure that those ghouls are a little bit more hit point heavy once they engage into the battle again. Yeah, down here a small army is coming through too. But with only 51 supply in the low upkeep, Todd is in a position that is not really too favorable for him. And yeah, 70 supply for Mad Frog. Mad Frog is still looking at a very nice setup where he is attempting to not really engage into a head-on battle. I mean, honestly, he's just playing a game where he's a game of attrition. He's trying to take his opponent down. Just look at the main base. Think about the resources that had to be spent by Todd in order to drop all of these guard towers here. He is still on tier 2. He never really had an opportunity to tech into castle because of that, which is another big issue. And there were so many peasants that were actually taken apart here. The riflemen are on one attack upgrade, zero upgrades on those footmen. And then when you compare that to what Mad Frog is running here with the 1-1 ghoul army, a couple of gargoyles still in the air, and those bad boys with two attack and one armor upgrade also looking pretty healthy. And now we're obviously having additional items for... Yeah, for him as well. I mean, just look at Mad Frog. He has like a scroll of feeling on every single hero. He has the scroll of the beast here. Can still drop Carrion Swarm on level 3. Has so much to offer in this fight right now. And Todd is just mustering up a defense, attempting to at least get a few scrolls of healing for his own army against the Infernal in particular. But this is going to spell trouble for him. It's 74 supply against 50. And Todd is not going to like that fight. But he's turtling in and trying to make sure that he at least can use those static defenses in a bit of... Uh, a nice position for himself but in comes the clap and holy shit those ghouls definitely wish they would have been at the other end of the army that didn't look too great here comes the staff of teleportation though there's the sleep the mana drain attempt and we should see the inferno come down that's exactly what happens another carrion swarm could also get dropped any second here and he's just rushing in with the scroll of the beast already underhand sleep after sleep hitting the mountain king that guy is just sleeping on the job at this point but just one clap drops the ghouls low once more and the scrolls of healing are already gone. Big problem right now for Mad Folk. He needs to get those units out of harm's way. Maybe heading into a couple of albums would have been the better choice here. But he just can't make it happen. And again, these guys are incredibly low. And one more clap and they're all going to be toast. But it jumps out. Couple of ghouls are lost here. Mountain King on level 5.5. Blood Mage nearly having level 3. 
two scrolls of town portal, by the way, on him uh, at this point in time. And looking over into the main base, Madfrog still sitting at a point where he's like, yeah, maybe ghouls are not the answer here. He goes back into gargoyles. You can't really blame the guy. That level 3 Thunderclap of the Mountain King is just absolutely wrecking through his ground army. He had two scrolls of healing, and even that didn't help him against the MK. Mountain King is just incredibly powerful. And Todd is back at 1,000 gold right now, 1,100 to be exact. So Madfog might have the superior army and be at 64 supply, which gives him a small lead in this. But Todd has a lot of spare gold that he can now use, if need be. And Madfrog just wasted a huge army because he just can't deal with that Mountain King. So he has still a fair amount of ghouls that he can run, especially when the MK is a little bit low on mana. But he's switching back into air units and is going to try and see if he can maybe impress these low HP units of the under player with that. So outside of it, we're having still a little bit of creeping going on. Not all of the spots have been taken on the map, and obviously Todd is hoping to get that Blood Mage into an even more dangerous position in this game right now. Has even a mana potion on that bad boy, and in addition to that, the Claws of Attack plus six. Again, Infernal and Carrion Swarm at the expansion, and guys, every single one of those peasants is toast. And there's pretty much nothing that Todd can do. I mean, you can try and maybe get a Potion of Invisibility, lie in wait and hope that the Dreadlord will show up exactly at that spot and then try and attack him. But let's face it, that's not going to be a sustainable strategy in the long run. Now the Infernal is even making its way back into the main base here, trying to get even a little bit more damage in. With all of the turrets here, it's a bit unlikely. Might be able to kill one or two, but that should be it. And yeah, guess who's not far behind? Dreadlord is on the move and zip another double kill against the Peasants. Doesn't get too much, but a double kill, uh, it's definitely worth it. And in the meantime, guess what? There's a little bit more solo creeping at the bottom left. Ring of Regeneration for the Death Knight. Another quick attack against the Dreadlord, but he's on level 7. And he can always use the Scroll of Town portal to get out of here. Uh, needs another sleep if he really wants to get away from this one. Because that Mountain King is not going to allow him to get away without a sleep. And there we have it. And that should be it. Dreadlord rushes away. Death Knight can heal him up later. 48 supply for Todd. 70 for his opponent. Madfrog therefore also in the low upkeep. So he pays a few taxes already on the gold income. And you have to imagine that Todd with 1,700 gold has pretty deep pockets. So he can make a switch happen if he ever needs to. Those gargoyles are currently not getting any additional upgrades. But we have a lot of them. Quad Crypt is making it happen. Easy transitions there for sure. Doesn't play with a single slaughterhouse here, I might add. Fully focused on an old school ROC style, if you so want. But we have a few more upgrades now coming in for Todd too. He had massive troubles getting those upgrades in in the earlier stages because his economy was just shattered over and over by the AoE spells of the under player. But now he's sitting at 2-0 Rifleman and he's going to get the armor upgrade for that one too. Blood Mage in addition to that. Ah, he's on the Mountain King also, nice items with the uh, mana potion, and is actually starting to take a bit of an initiative in the game itself. So currently starting to muster up a bit of an attack. Also moving over to the shop, and as mentioned before, gets both of the scrolls of healing right here. So with a single shop on the map, that's a pretty important one. Map, by the way, completely crept. There's not a single creep cam anymore, and here's the tech into keep that we finally have right there. So with that, he has another opportunity to uh, go into a few absolutely crucial upgrades and also add a little bit more there later on. That's a bit more of a passive stance that the two of them have on the map right now. And especially in the case of Todd, you can't really blame the guy. I mean, he has... How many peasants has he lost at this point? He must have honestly lost like up to 40, 50 or something like that. It was incredible. It's just an absolute massacre that we had there. And here comes again, Madfrog with an attempt at an attack. Scroll of Protection this time, and has one Scroll of Healing in the inventory. I'm a little bit worried that that might not be enough for him. We've seen how much that Mountain King did to the entire Ghoul army early on. So if that happens again, that's going to be a big problem. But at least the Sleep is on level 2. Tries to... S oh yes. Tries to snipe a little bit one of those uh, towers away. But with Todd's army being present, that doesn't happen. That's another Gargoyle down the drain. But he also killed a few of those. The cool thing, of course, is now if you have priests in those lines, they can at least heal everybody up again. And that's a little bit of a relief and helps you to keep that entire peasant line alive. But it is definitely still a little bit tricky. 
And the moves are still there. I mean, Matt Fogg is now starting to move towards the top again, so he's playing the game that he played in the early game. He's hitting the bases one after another. Top, bottom, top, bottom. But you still have to imagine that with all those scrolls of Town Portal, Todd doesn't really care if he just uses one or two. Aggressive portal forward and doesn't get too much, but Todd is eager to fight apparently. Well, actually, Mad Frog is starts to move in, could go for the sleep again, and there's the infernal. And at least the top is in huge trouble. All of those riflemen are definitely eating damage. And here comes the sleep again, and the immediate follow up with another carrion swarm as we are having Mad Frog dropping some serious damage here. Still has the scroll of protection in the inventory, hasn't used it yet so far. The sleep on the blood mage is attempting to drain the mana off the army. We have 50 supply for Todd and 66 for Madfolk after the little encounter between the two of them. Level 3 Blood Mage and Mountain King is nearly level 6. Gets another Stormbolt connected. Well played by him. But obviously quite a lot of resources lost on both sides. And Todd is actually running out of, of lumber. He's running out of lumber quickly. He's sitting at 1,000 again, but 2,000 gold. And again, it seems more and more like he's focusing most of his attention on items at this point. And well, with those, he can get Stormbolt after Stormbolt out. Level 7 for the Dreadlord, level 4 for the Death Knight. So, from his perspective, we at least get the aura on level 2, the Unholy Aura that he can play through. Uh, at the same time, now we have up to the top already one gold mine eliminated. And this is actually something. Ooh, Shade's even coming in. And there's the switch into Abominations. I talked about it actually a little bit earlier. And with the ghoul suffering this much against the Mountain King, he's actually starting to do exactly that. Slaughterhouse comes in. At this point, we're also having the Disease Cloud coming through. Two, two upgrades by now on the ground army. But one of the things that we still have to highlight is that we have both of those gold mines actually eliminated. And you look over to Todd, who's sitting at 2,000 gold. He has 500 still up to the top gold mine, another 1,000 down here at the bottom. And the reason for that is obviously pretty simple. With all the damage that Madfrog has done to the economy through this entire game and all the mining time that Todd lost because he had to replenish peasants and sometimes rush away with them or defend in militia form, it means that he mined a lot less in the early stages. And that gives Todd now a lot more resources. So this is actually starting to become a little bit tricky for Madfrog because this is pretty much the army that he's going to rely on for the rest of the game. Todd is by no means out of that. Todd has taken a beating in the early game. Absolutely, at least when it comes to the economy. But he also managed to get a pretty high level Mountain King up to more or less secure his bases after having to adjust to the strategy that Madfog is playing here. And he's still looking at a lot of resources. At a certain point, he never crossed 50 supply anymore. He just sat there and was like, I'm not attacking you. You have to attack me. Attack into my towers, I dare you. And he never really built a bigger army. And he didn't have any need to. So now with the shade, obviously Madfrog has a bit of an angle that he can use. But you have to also imagine that Todd is still the one bit of the two players that can at any point start to make another unit transition or simply invest into additional resources here. And that's something that is making this game slightly difficult for Madfrog. Now he has a lot of good units here. We're having Abominations in the mix as a statue that can give him the long-term sustain if it isn't taken out. And we're having Gargoyles that can still hit very easily from behind, get a couple of hits in, just play that hit and run style. But this game is by no means over. Madfrog is currently sitting at the superior supply numbers, but that doesn't mean much if your opponent is still relying on 3,000 gold. The one thing that's missing is Lumber, and he's going to get that eventually. So here comes the attack now, micring a couple of the units away and starting to chip away against the towers here. One goes down, that's that. Down at the bottom of the map, he could actually unsummon also all of these if he really needs to. And Todd is still keeping his army in the middle. Because he knows that there's likely going to be an attempt to hit two of the bases at once. But another Stormbolt! And especially with his items now, with the Orb of Fire, there's a chance that he can take those gargoyles down. The Death Knight is taking that chance away from him. But <laughs> that game, again, it's not over by any means. On the upgrades, we have 2-1 for the Gargoyles, 2-2 for the Ground Army, as I mentioned. But look at those Riflemen. Three attack upgrades, two armor upgrades. Definitely looking quite powerful. And Todd has now moved into the lower upkeep. At this point, pretty much done with mining at the top. And near, done at the bottom, Todd has said, well, I'm not mining anymore. At this point, I might as well, as spend, uh, well, I might as well spend my gold. No reason to hold back. Has the Staff of Sanctuary now in his inventory, so that's going to help him also big time. And that's going to be interesting too. But this is going to be a setup where we are going to have quite a little bit of fun for him. Because, yep, that could hurt 
once that mad for I mean let's see how mad for plays it actually but that could definitely be a setup where it's going to become difficult for the undead player he has scrolls now has scrolls of healing on every single hero but mad frog is out of gold plain and simple doesn't have any gold more anymore down at the bottom he can unsummon a couple of things but that's about it there's another attempt to double check what's happening at the expansion but since he sees that there is no gold mine left any longer he already knows that this is going to be a war of attrition unit after unit you have to fight for every single hit point at this point of the game and here comes the arc mage <laughs> arc mage comes in as the third hero no paladin no paladin we're not going to see any kind of holy light and well hammer action against specific heroes but he actually goes into an arc mage right now with a blizzard as the first talent to be taken so a little bit more aoe and honestly i'm interested to see how much the arc mage can actually pull off in this particular setup here for him right now and at some point they need to also make a move todd is even killing his own workers right now there's no reason for him to have those workers still. And he kills them off so that he doesn't go... Um, actually, at this point... Honestly, I'm asking myself why exactly he kills them off. Because he doesn't mine anymore anyways. So might as well go into the high upkeep. If he still had a gold mine available, I would say high upkeep reason. That's why. But... Bitter's loss. I think I'm overlooking something here. But yep. Workers are taken out. Maybe he just figures he can't do anything with them anymore. And if they're getting killed by the undead player, they provide experience for those heroes. So that might be one of those. Nothing to do with them anymore outside of getting lumber. And honestly, it's, let's just face it. If there's an attack and you put them into peasants, then one carrion swarm is just going to uh, kill them anyways. So I think he feels he only needs a few more for lumber. He doesn't have a lot of gold to spend anyways. So pretty much useless at this point. There's a third armor upgrade also coming in. Is another big one and that's 78 supply on both sides <laughs> they are evenly matched when it comes to the supply numbers and there's only one ziggurat down at the bottom of the map the rest has been unsummoned and todd is taking this one out pretty easily yeah so mad frog is currently sitting at a spot where he's just sitting in this base and saying like okay we're in for the long run right now we are in for the long game boys and the main base, let's have a quick look at the army. A single statue that he's currently running. We have the three abominations that I talked about earlier. Upgrades still on 2-2. Two, two. Didn't add any additional ones. 2-1 gargoyles. 3-3, three, three, as mentioned previously, nearly for the rifleman. Should by now be done, actually. He's unsummoning a couple more structures. Gonna be interesting to see what exactly he's going to build. Seems like we're gonna get... Oh, destroyer upgrade for now. Alright, so we get one destroyer upgrade so that he has a bit of dispel available for himself too against the inner fire. That's definitely going to help him. But from an item perspective on the side of his opponent, this is still going to be pretty nuts. Nicely done also by Todd to give a potion of lesser invulnerability over to the Archmage. That's definitely needed. If you don't get that, your problem is simply going to be that a simple combo is going to take down. I'm talking about simple combos. That's one priest already down. That's a nuisance. On the Mountain King, we're currently having also... Like, the overlay, the item slots are pretty much okay, but there's a little bit of a bug, apparently, where this item, the boots, are always mirroring one. So, it's a little bit misleading. Most of the items are absolutely correct when you're currently looking at those stats, but still, that one on the Mountain King is a little bit wrong. But either way, the point is still that the Archmage can, of course, easily be taken down if focused, since he's still on level 1. So if you have the Potion of Lesser Invulnerability there, then that obviously helps. But adding the third hero in and of itself helps, of course, not only with the abilities that the hero brings to the table, but also more inventory slots. And look at the amount of heal scrolls that we actually have. We have at this point one heal scroll on every single hero that he's running. And that's a lot more that we can say from Madfrog. And Madfrog is still trying to play around the shade. That's one of the things that uh, Todd has actually not figured out yet. Okay, there's another attempt, but didn't quite work out. Yeah, he didn't hit the priest with the carrion swarm, so that coil did nothing. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Good play by Todd. Todd realized that something is a little bit fishy here. These attacks always came just a little bit too perfect, and he knew there must have been some kind of vision game that is being played by Madfrog. So nice job by Todd going for the reveal with the towers here and then eliminating the shade. That was a really, really good move and an important one too. If not for that, we would have seen Madfrog just chip away at the numbers of the human player throughout this entire game. But there's another one available. Yeah, another attempt and another priest down. Guys, the more priests you can kill, the better in the long run. I mean, just look at it. He's currently relying on two priests. 
He had a lot more previously, but every single attack that we are seeing from Madfrog so far eliminates another one that takes Inner Fire as an option away, and also the heal abilities. And since he's still running one statue, he can still uh, replenish his mana. So Todd currently realizing that he finally has to put uh, something in here and get a little bit of damage in. He's doing exactly that, or at least trying to. Here comes the Inferno and the Carrion Swarm right away. It's party time. One sleep after another on the Mountain King. The first clap is coming through, but the Inferno in the backline is doing some serious damage. Could get coiled here. Not happening thus far, but there's the Town Portal as Todd is moving out. 71 supply for Madfrog against 71 for Todd. Both of them against dead even on this. Pulled even a couple of Militia into that fight but they are now getting toasted very very quickly by the rest of the army here I don't think that he's actually sacrificing a carrion swarm for this one he's a little bit low on mana for the dreadlord and he probably wants to save that for the battle itself has to drop one sleeper Ooh, gargoyles hello <laughs> yep that stormbolt connects but not enough damage or is it well, gets another Sorcerer Snipe. Nicely done, but also losing a few more units. Gets a Rifleman eliminated. I guess that actually was a worthy trade here for him. 64 supply against 67 right now. They're battling for every single unit here. And once again, the attack against the ground army and the frog is losing an Abom. That Abomination is down, already ready for the body blocks here. And this one is toast. And there it is. Level 6 Mountain King. All right, now we're talking. Avatar form available, and now we can try and play through that also in the big fight. No upgrades just yet for the uh, for the Archmage, but level two is gonna hit soon enough. Then again, when we're looking over to the Death Knight, obviously he's still not on level five. Could also coil that infernal here once again. Having still the attack here, already going straight into uh, the ultimate. Here comes the flank from the side, level up for the Blood Mage, level 4 for him. Carrion Swarm is coming through once more. A lot of mana still available on the Dreadlords. They're going in again with a clap against the Ghouls, it's just wreaking havoc. Scroll of Protection already being used on the side of Madfog, the underplayer trying to crush through the army. Another quick move with the Carrion Swarm, level 5 for the DK. And he's trying to use those Scrolls of Healing. Same happening on the side of his opponent though. One Scroll of Healing after another, the clap is just annihilating ghoul after ghoul the drain of mana through the blood mage level two for the arc mage finally no pressure against him potion of lesser invulnerability still in the inventory 35 supply against 54 mad for with the superior numbers right now but still clavity clap as that mountain king is just crushing it but the ground army is nearly gone the triple hero the only remaining force that the human player can rely upon and he's trying to put that to the test here but too much is already lost a couple of gargos are still remaining in the Double Abomination is also still in play. Currently, Madfog moving back has problems on the mana pool. That's an issue, but the statue is still alive. There's the quick Stormbolt against the Dreadlord. Not quite level 8 just yet. And the Death Knight doesn't have enough mana for a coil. But still, he moves back into uh, the back of the base. Obviously, right now, Todd can only rely on the 24 supply that he's currently running here. But still, Madfog is with the back to the wall. He doesn't have mana. He's currently trying to replenish it as well as also the HP. And that's a rifleman that he has to protect somehow as well, even though it's not going to survive for too long. There's no turrets, honestly. The Black Citadel is the only thing that he has here. The attack is coming through again, buying a little bit more time for the underplayer to replenish his mana pool so that he can fight that fight again. But we're still seeing Todd trying to aggressively take down the remaining units that we're seeing from the under perspective. And he takes another Gargoyle down. Unit after unit eliminated. 24 supply against 39. Still a bit of mana on the Mountain King, but he's retreating now as well and mad fox still sitting tight double hero against triple hero level seven level five for the frog against the six four and two levels that we're having for the human player in the main base on the other hand one rifleman still back after the staff of sanctuary was already used earlier we still have a bit of gold for Todd so he can actually go to the shop and maybe get himself something this is another staff of sanctuary used in order to get the mountain king at least back to full hp the problem for Todd is obviously... Ooh, more shades coming in now too. The problem for Todd is obviously that right now there's still two abominations which definitely pose a threat and those two statues. If you would have been able to take the statues down, that would have been the dream for him because this is the ticket that Madfog has to get back into this game or to win this game. Because now we are going to see full HP undead heroes again and in addition to that, they're going to have a pretty solid mana pool too. 
Mountain King, nearly fully recovered though. And if you look at the rest of the army, if he gets another Staff of Sanctuary onto the Archmage, if you even need it, that's going to help him as well. But if you look at that army, he has one priest. One priest, all that he has, and a Brilliance Aura on level 1. Which is not going to be of too much help here. I'm actually pretty sure that if he could, he would probably reskill a couple of the heroes at this point. But with that level 5, or sorry, that level 5 Death Knight and level 3 Coil for the Death Knight, it is going to be tricky to take any of this down. And he's actually just moving down to the bottom of the map again. He can fight the fight whenever. He needs to break through those turrets. That's the big problem that Madfolk has. Because Todd is going to be very unwilling in order to make any of these plays. But especially, of course, with the Infernal still in the toolbox of the Dreadlord, in the long run, that is something that should give Madfolk the upper hand here. Todd has to rely on the heroes. And that's one of the reasons why he's currently sitting in the far in the back of the base. He's waiting for the under player's next move. And so he should. It's definitely one of the best things that he can do right now. Todd still has one scroll of healing, by the way. That's one scroll of healing that he still might be able to use here. A little bit of unsummoning has been used. There's another shade that can be used by Madfrog. And yeah, he's still sitting in the main base just waiting for an opportunity. But he has to make the decision soon. He's trying to play around with those gargoyles a little bit. But since there's only... Gargoyles are an amazing unit for harass, but it's also a unit that needs a bit of critical mass where you can more or less one or two shot a unit. And he currently doesn't have that. So just nipping around the edges is not going to help him in the long run. Losing those workers is not meaning it doesn't mean anything to Todd, seriously. If he could take the priest down, for example, that would be a different matter. But at this point, he's just trying to get a couple of attacks in. But again, if it was more than only the three gargoyles, he might have a solid chance there. But he will have to rely on other units if he really wants to put a dent into the defenses of his human opponent. And that's pretty much what he's going to try and do. Stone form here to also heal those units up. A little bit more poking already happening, but especially since those Scar Towers do siege damage against the unarmored Gargoyles, they do the extra damage too. So that doesn't help either. And at the bottom of the map, nothing left here anymore. Over here, this one doesn't really matter too much at this point. There's obviously a huge amount of towers, so Todd could try and use that as a retreat point again if he really needs to. But at this point, he's just trying to defend the main base here for now. And ideally, he would try and get a kill against the heroes. I mean, let's face it, you kill a hero at this point in time, especially an undead hero, and the game's over. There's the coil and the immediate Staff of Sanctuary. Nicely played. Todd with the immediate reaction, and the gargoyles are not going to be sacrificed for this one. But, talking about sacrificing, one gargoyle down. But here comes the Infernal, and he goes for the Archmage, and he takes him down. Infernal carry and swarm, and the coil from the Death Knight. And there we go, the third hero down. He tries to make a play again for the Blood Mage. Oh my god, you're kidding me. 13 hit points as the Blood Mage survives. And now, do we have a few more units coming in? Yes, the Infernal with a big boy kill against the Blood Mage right there. One hero remaining for Todd. He's down to the Mountain King at this point in time. And that should pretty much spell disaster. Yes, the Infernal is still moving through a little bit. But obviously now, it should just be a matter of time. Unless Madfrog absolutely brain farts this one and YOLOs into the opponent, th this should pretty much be the moment where he just won the game. The insta-kill against the Archmage. Level 2 hero just doesn't have the hit point pool that he needs for the sustain. Ooh. Todd actually in a position where he's currently starting to get himself a little bit more money by selling a few items. And he's trying to revive both of his heroes. Yeah, the coil is keeping the infernal on the other hand alive, so that's a bit of a problem. I'm not quite sure if he has the time for that. But with 50 gold, he's trying to repair. Ooh, that's going to be rough. Coil comes in, this time actually against the Mountain King. He's trying to whittle him down slowly, as he still has the double statue. He can be a bit more freely expendable on those. But he's trying to prevent the Blood Mage from coming back into the game. 26 gold is all that remains here. Stormbolt comes in again. There's no items anymore. Can he take those peasants down? He's trying to. He won't even have to for much longer because there's only 12 gold remaining for Todd. And that's a problem. He's at 8. He's at 6. He's down to 4. Guys, he won't be able to repair this anymore. He won't be able to repair anything. Surround on the Mountain King as he's trying to go for it. On an attempt at least. This one kind of failing slightly. But we have that Blood Mage. 50% back to business, but it doesn't really look good. That Blood Mage should not see the light of day anymore. No gold left for the repair, and the altar is down. 500 gold still remaining 
for Todd. And that is all. Avatar form is still in a little bit longer. There's the shades on the map that can be used by Mad Frog. And at this point in time, another coil is healing up the Inferno, who can fall straight into the back line with one turret already eliminated. He's still going for the next one, trying to drop the Arcane Tower. And this is just a disaster for Todd. Todd is hoping for a lucky punch here, but now with the Avatar farm also just being off cooldown, this is not helping him either. And that Infernal is just being kept alive, and that's one mine army in and of itself. With 500 gold, what exactly can Todd actually do here? Well, Todd at this point has actually spent a little bit of gold. Currently wondering what he's pulling off. Down at the bottom of the map, nothing built over here. Oh, trying to get the Altar of Kings back! Damn, he is really determined, isn't he? Yeah, he doesn't want to lose that game at all. Infernal finally getting dropped, but could use another one and does exactly that. Sees the altar, goes straight for the remaining peasants. No altar for you, buddy. Takes this one down, turret is down. Well, the last layers of the defense of Todd are currently crumbling. He's trying to make a play for the Mountain King too, but with the peasants dying and also all of those turrets being eliminated, this is not looking pretty for the human player. It was a long and odious match between the two of them. But right now, this seems like the end of the road for Todd. The Mountain King on level 6 is making the plays, but up here towards the top, as you can already tell, that Blood Mage is not going to come back. And now that the Mountain King is losing HP after HP, with the double statue still making it possible for him, there we have the run of the MK. He gets hit again by the Carrion Swarm. There comes the move immediately with a coil as well. And that's going to be the end of the MK. Nicely done here. A pretty epic match on Echo Isles, actually. Well done, and that is it. Last one eliminated, that's GG as Madfrog takes down Todd, the number one on the ladder. Obviously, still with the caveat that between the two, the score is still very much so tilted in favor of the human player. Todd with a great player as well, but in this case, the Carrion Swarm, as he also talks about here. Just a little bit too strong. Incredibly frustrating, of course, to go up against this, as you might imagine, especially with the Worker Line just being absolutely decimated throughout all of this. But right now, at the end of the day, the victory goes to the Undead player. Madfog able to take it. And that is that. The quick kill against the Archmage initiating all of that, and then the follow-up against the Blood Mage, where the Infernal got the final hit in. And that is game, ladies and gentlemen.